um, Dan Marbs. He's the AVP of Infrastructure Design at Associated Bank. Come on in. You guys are watching The Cube. Thank you so much for joining us. The Cube is Silicon Angle's flagship broadcast. Silicon Angle is the worldwide leader in tech event coverage. And we also have Dave Vellante here. I'm here from wikibon.org, and uh, and it's good to be here in, in Orlando. And we're, we're here with Dan Marbs, who Callie is a big fan. So, uh, yeah, she's been a fan of the show for a long time. <laughs> Thank Dan you. Dan said, I got nice to meet you. I got to be on with you. Callie. So, Appreciate uh, it. Yeah. You guys switched uh, gears on me over there. We <laughs> so. did. So we Dan, uh, kind of explain what you do, what, is, what Associated Bank is. And, uh, you know, just what you guys do over there. Sure. Associated Bank, uh, we are a, a commercial and personal bank in the Midwest. Uh, okay. We have a three-state footprint. We're in Wisconsin and Illinois and Minnesota. Okay. Uh, we provide full-service banking for, for all of our clients, so loans, mortgages, and um, the whole financial services okay, package. Cool. Um, I am a systems engineer. I work on our design team. I, I function really as our lead uh, server and storage designer. Um, so we are, we are here um, sort of giving the good word about Compellent. We've been a Compellent okay. customer for a little over five years um, from uh, taking our journey with them since they were fairly small and mm. uh, we we feel like we've grown up with them in the storage space. So we're, uh, we're just here telling our story this year. So was it an awkward transition as Compellent got bought? Uh, no, we were we were excited to see all of the new opportunities with the Dell family that would be uh, would be opened to yeah. the compelling product line. A little bit scared because we've seen other acquisitions in the past, <laughs> yeah. not, not necessarily by Dell, but usually uh, that whole acquisition process is a very yeah. scary thing for right, everyone right. on the well, other side. You're always you're always worried that the the organization doing uh, the, the purchase mm -hmm. of the small company is going to take them and, and tear them apart and and ruin the fabric of what it was that made the company so successful. And with Compellent, there's really a whole culture surrounding the company. I mean, that they're really a small shop, able to be very agile and very mobile um, because of their, their small size. That's awesome. And just a great culture of people that they developed. So, so take us back to, you said five years, you've been working with Compel. Take yeah. us back five years ago. What was the world like and what were the drivers um, to move in that we were, uh, we were using primarily DAS five years ago. Uh, and we knew that after one of the, our recent acquisitions, um, that we needed to provide some more centralized storage, primarily for document archiving, all of our old uh, green screen reports and uh, signature cards and all those sorts of documents. Um, so we know we needed some sort of SAN solution uh, because we were just scaling out faster than, um, than DAS was really going to allow us to uh, keep going. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had looked at a couple of vendors. Um, the uh, company that we purchased had some existing sand storage and that vendor um, was really more aimed at really massive million dollar plus enterprise deployments and we just weren't really ready for that at that point. Um, so we um, actually at the end got down to considering the Ecologic solution and uh, the Compellent solution um, and we ended up going with the Compellent solution. Okay. So we started out small, our original deployment was about 17 terabytes. Um, and over that five years, we've grown from one array with that small amount of storage to eight production arrays with about 900 terabytes in total. Uh, Did you wow. What? Do you have to have people? Did you add people to manage that? Or yeah. We are, at this point, we have four engineers who uh, take part in both the SAN design and administration activities. But um, in our time estimates for the last month, we figured it, it's a one-tenth of one FTE total. Uh, across all systems for all design and administration tasks. Time and that was... Thing. Yeah, it was, we, there were like 26 hours of time logged in the last month for a administration. So okay. it, it really does run itself. I mean, I hear these horror stories about people saying they've got spreadsheets of data to manage where this block is, and that's, that's ah. insane. <laughs> so we just let the system basically run itself, and we learned long ago, don't try to outsmart the hardware. Just let it do its thing, and somebody needs more space, we go click, 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 and it's done. Your background so, is not one management? Uh, no, my I is actually, that what? Lund management. Oh. No, my background <laughs> is, is actually education. I have a undergraduate degree in music education. I was a high school band director for really? uh, five years before becoming a touring performer, which was the last time I was in Orlando, and uh, hmm. now I work in IT. Wow. Kelly was like a junior high school band director yesterday at uh, Downtown Disney. Maybe an elementary oh, was school it? band director. Nice. You, you were doing that. Oh, and yeah. And no, I was doing the chicken dance. Kids. That's kind of what you do. I don't know if I was directing <laughs> rather than I was trying to follow along. Oh, I thought they were mimicking you. <laughs> no. With junior high students, that is often the best strategy. Yes. 
<laughs> Try not to get trampled. <laughs> so uh, just to veer off course here a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, you said the last time you were here in Orlando. Yeah. How Are you still That was the performing? summer of, uh, I perform a lot now, just not with that show. Um, in the summer of 2002, I was selected to be part of the initial touring cast for uh, an offshoot of the show Blast called Shockwave. And we performed for three months on the American Adventure stage at Epcot uh, and then nice. did a seven month US tour. Wow, and that's then, a long time to yes. be on the road. And then after that, the, the show went to London, and I ended up going back into uh, into education and then eventually transitioned into IT. Wow. Mm-hmm. What a life you've had. It's <laughs> so to go back to you know the, the move to Compellent when you guys decided, mm-hmm. uh, was you said it was really easy, obviously, but were there any you know sticking points? Was, was there any tough part to that transition? Not to that transition. Um, We've had a few bumps in the road along the way. We figured out at one point, we had tried to take those original rays that we had and just make them scale up to be very, very, very large. I mean, at one point, I think the initial arrays we had, we built them up to about 160 or 170 terabytes each. Yeah. And the problem is, it's great to have all your eggs in one basket because it's just there, but when the bottom breaks out of the basket, it's, it's problematic. And and we fell into a trap where I think a lot of people do only considering, you know, I have X amount of gigabytes available and I have X amount of gigabytes of data. Mm-hmm. This one is less than this one, so I'm good. Without considering the impact of the performance uh, on those uh, of those different workloads. We In 2007, yeah. we switched away from tape and we went to all disk to disk backup. Um, and, and even from a, a data recovery standpoint, having your backup data on the same spindles as your production data is really stupid. Uh, <laughs> because if you have yeah. some sort of data center failure, you've lost everything. Sure. So we've we've adapted, you know, I think in, in the computing world in general, we realize we can't, even with processors, we can't continue to scale up and scale up and scale up. So now we scale out. So okay. that's why at this point we have uh, four production arrays in each of our data. Okay. How do you do your backups? What, what's uh, um, you a snapshot or? Uh, we actually are using a disk-to-disk backup third-party product at this point. Um, for some of our very largest systems, like our document archiving system, which is currently... Uh, around 17 terabytes of live production data. We actually use snapshots and then replicate that offsite to our other. To What's the your compa- backup software? Uh, we're using uh, a product called Evolt right now uh, okay. by i365. Uh-huh. You know Evo and like it? Uh, Evolt, I know I a little bit. I know i365 a bit. I mean, it's it's sort of an emerging, you know, mm-hmm. category of software, right? If it's not the classic yeah. uh, Symantec, Tivoli, right. uh, <laughs> uh, Legato based, right? So mm-hmm. I, yeah, I like it. You okay. Know, I think it's. Uh, it's, I mean, for disk to disk, right? I mean, that's the mm-hmm. that's the future. You know, no tape. Uh, we we only use tapes uh, for our core IBM hardware right now, which was out of scope at the time that we initially implemented that solution. But for all our, we're primarily a Windows shop. Uh, for all of our Windows boxes, the uh, backups are all disk, uh, all tapeless. And you're doing virtualization, server virtualization. Yeah, using we are. Um, or VMware. Or? Uh, we are using both. Uh, in the data centers, we're primarily using VMware's ESX 40 and 41. Uh, we are probably 70% virtualized in the data center at this okay. point. Um, we still have a significant physical hardware footprint because we have approximately 300 remote locations, uh, branch offices and, and uh, brick and mortar back office locations. And it's without fully revamping your infrastructure and going with VDIs and thinking about converging all your data inside the data centers, um, there's really just a need for a physical server talk in those about, locations. Talk about the bank. What's happening at the bank, at the business, and what is that? Been talking doing about different for, industries. For yeah. IT. What is, what is that? Um, What's happening? What does it mean for well, you? Well, we just we're really trying to provide uh, service to the customer and give them all the channels that they want. Uh, this past weekend, we just launched a major revision to our online banking platform, and we now have a mobile banking platform. So as as people begin to use their tablets and their smartphones as really their primary interface device to the internet, uh, we want them to be able to have their banking you know, activities be able to work on those devices. So you can get your balances, you can transfer funds mm-hmm. and do it all from your phone. Yeah, that's been you know a huge mm-hmm. thing on, on, on the consumer and to mm-hmm. use the phone for banking. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been interesting to watch as, as those changes happen. So, so do you see that going anywhere different than it is now? I think as, as we, as that platform as a smartphone and tablet platform becomes more capable and has more ability. Mm -hmm. I know there are banks right now experimenting with take a picture of a check and submit that through your mobile banking platform yeah, I think and actually it's, deposit that to your account. We won't mention them, sorry. Right. <laughs> the bank which must not be named. Um, right. You know, we, we will continue to see what uh, what our partners, um, you know, our third-party providers uh, are able to 
leverage uh, okay. you know, as, as those platforms develop. How about this idea of an app store for the enterprise? Is that something that your industry, you think, will, hmm. will get to or your organization? At the point where we're, I think, fully ready to embrace tablets and smartphones and we really understand the different work types uh, that occur, because you, you think about a loan origination officer versus a teller versus a traveling salesperson versus a traveling IT person and every one of those people interfaces with the network and with the data differently so what we really need to do is, is continue to be cognizant of what those roles are okay. and uh, adjust their interface to fit so if that's a tablet or a smartphone with an app store great if that's a, a laptop with a Citrix application portal great if it's a fat desktop great you know, we want to we, we want to let the business drive the technology decision so we can provide the right solutions to those folks rather than simply trying to shoehorn technology into that we think is cool into a place where it might not be needed. And we were talking off camera, sure. you, you're doing some desktop virtualization, but it hasn't really hit the whole yeah, it's, mobile it's a, space yet. It's a pilot project at this point. What we, we're looking at uh, was if you have a large back office location that becomes unusable, tornado, fire, flood, mm -hmm. Godzilla, you know, what have you, <laughs> um, we want we need some way to uh, allow those users to be functional in, in as short a time as possible. So we've taken some unused space in uh, some of our current locations and put a number of thin clients out there, and we're leveraging uh, VDIs right now for workspace recovery um, and business resumption for for those folks. Okay. So um, so it really hasn't hit the mobile side of your business yet? Not yet. Mm -mm. Yeah. Do, you, do you expect that, that VDI, uh, desktop virtualization, why do you even call it desktop virtualization anymore, right? I mean, we've got all these devices. You think uh, that... Because virtualization's a buzzword and people like buzzwords. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so speaking of buzzwords, so you do, you do server virtualization mm -hmm. um, and you use some VMware. Yes. Um, and, and the VDI is VMware as well? Or? Yes, it's, uh, it's on VMware right now, uh, fronted by Citrix. Uh, okay. Hmm. So both. Mm -hmm. How do you do disaster recovery? Very carefully. <laughs> um, we actually, for a lot of our critical applications, we leverage uh, some of the asynchronous replication features in the Compellent product. Our document archiving system, for example, um, we have, I believe, nine or 10 virtual servers and a two node cluster um, that backends the database and all the file share data. And that entire infrastructure lifts up, um, replicates over to the other data center and uh, can be presented on other hardware in the opposite data center. And we take advantage of some network tricks with stretch VLANs and yeah. um, that sort of thing. So you can bring the same servers up in another building on the same IP address. So to the client, nothing has changed. Okay. They, they access the application. Their, their client that they have on their workstation uh, interfaces with the backend components in exactly the same way. And many times they're not even aware it's moved, and we can move that entire application, which is close to 20 terabytes of data, in under two hours. So you said that's a, an active-active. Yes. Arrangement, but, uh, but you said it's, it's asynchronous before, but not. Uh, um, we don't. We don't have fiber between the two sites, so we don't have low enough latency to do synchronous replication. Okay. So how do you deal with RPO? Uh, we take snapshots of that application every 15 minutes, um, and replicate those across, and they sync. Um, relatively quickly. It's just with the mechanics of synchronous replication, it would put an undue burden on the uh, on the time to complete a transaction. So, we just so you don't have a zero RPO requirement? It's as close to zero as we can get. Um, with our core transaction processing system on the IBM hardware, we use their, uh, their Mimix replication product, which is transaction-based replication. Mm -hmm. Um, and with some of our larger SQL databases, we, we do database mirroring between, uh, between sites because that gets us a lot closer to zero, uh, zero RPO. Right, okay. And, um, and do, you see, do you see that business requirement shrinking? Or uh, is 15 minutes okay for the business? Or are they saying? Yeah. It really depends on, on the classification of the application. I mean, we have some which are really like our core transaction processing systems. You can't lose anything ever. So what do right. you do there? Uh, that's on the IBM hardware that's using the Mimix replication, which is um, transaction-based replication. Yeah, so that's uh, that's that's essentially as, mm -hmm. as close to zero RPO as, as you can get. As you can get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So you said you're um, here to share at the forum to yes. share your story to interact with people and mm -hmm. um, other customers, I guess, right? Yes. How's that going? Have you oh, met anybody really interesting? Uh, we've done a lot of uh, chatting with analysts and, and media folks over the last couple of days. Um, I think that this conference is really interesting. I think you have people who are from the Equalogic camp that are apprehensive and excited all at the same time about Compellent, and you have people mm. from the Compellent camp who are 
excited and apprehensive all at the same time okay. about what does the what does the, the merger into Dell bring and how do right. these partnerships affect the product. So um, our experience has been that you know all of these players in the space that we've worked with generally have the customer's best yeah. interest in mind, and and we believe that. Um, now with Compellent being part of this larger family that it's going to open even more doors. Okay. You know, it reminds so. me, we have, to, uh, to digress, we have dear friends <laughs> who live in England. We mm -hmm. haven't probably seen them in you know, close to 10 years. They're coming over this year and we're going to rent the house down the beach with our kids. And our kids have all grown up. I'm there. jealous. Right, so, but it's like the f two families getting together, the, mm -hmm. the parents all know each other, but the kids, you know, it's like yeah. Compellent Ecologic, what's going on here? And That's a good analogy there. Good. I have no <laughs> doubt it'll all be good. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, um, what about Compellent? Let's talk a little bit more about them because I've talked to a lot of Compellent customers, and, and actually, you guys are kind of boring. Like the stuff doesn't break. It's just you <laughs> set it and forget it. I mean, what doesn't Compellent do well that you wished it did well? Yeah. I really can't think of anything. I, can't I answer what, what is up with that? I don't know. It, it's um, <laughs> part part of the advantage that we have having been a customer for so long is that. Uh, I have really good relationship with a lot of the senior engineers and senior support people. Um, so even when it's a, a feature request, um, matter of fact, I just spent some time talking with one of the directors of technical engineering today, and I was like, you know, it'd be great if if your replay manager product, which is their um, their VSS uh, yeah. snapshot engine, if it did, if it just did this, you know, your your power, all your PowerShell integration, if you could just add commandlets for these two little things, and it's like, okay. Yeah, that was it. I'll probably have them in less than a month. Wow. Yeah. And they're like, oh. I'm like, yeah, this didn't work exactly. I said, okay, sure, I'll fix it. Do you, Do you see that changing? I really don't because I, I, I really think, I mean, I, I continue to be struck in both meeting and listening to Michael Dell and just how he really seems to understand the human aspect of this business. Yeah. We talked about Dell the Dell Salesforce becoming trusted advisors mm -hmm. um, and really building long-term relationships. And I think that, as you talked about, really looking at and embracing the co-pilot support model um, and just understanding what that culture is all about. And, and we're, we're really good friends with um, with the president, with Phil Soren, the president of Compellent. Yeah. And he's really confident that, you know, that culture is going to be able to stay in place and it's, it's just going to build. I mean, they're adding all sorts of staff, but I know they're hiring the right people that are, you know, going to keep that that same culture alive. Yeah, Phil's great. He's been on the Cube a couple times. Yep. He's been Yesterday on and today twice. here. <laughs> Funny guy. This week we had him on a VMware a couple times, and uh, you hear the same theme with compelling customers. Yeah. We had Heineken on at uh, at VMworld, and absolutely love it. And, and it's just a, it's, it's hard amazing. to believe almost. Yeah, you know? It is hard to believe, right? Because it's this is IT, right? There's right. Something. Like, yeah. All right. Let me tell you the inside baseball on that. But um, yeah, and I think so. some of the frustration that, that generally we as technologists have with with our technology providers is that we, we understand that not everything is going to work 100 percent right 100 percent of, of the course. time. But when you get I, there's another vendor that I work with that I it took me six months to resolve a what I consider to be a fairly basic support slash design issue. Okay. Um, with Compellent, I, I've never had to wait more than a couple of days for RCAs. Hmm. Um, they'll escalate it up to the highest levels of engineering, and they will get you the answers you need. And if you're actually in, if you're in a jam where something hasn't worked right and it happens to be service affecting, it's they will get all hands on deck and fix it as fast as humanly possible. You know, it's interesting when, when it's we impressive. started Wikibon. My colleague David Floor and I, we did a lot of. He did. He's a CTO. Did a lot of technical analysis, and we we looked at all the various suppliers and we asked each of them can you give us you know examples of what, what we call the hero report you know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about no I don't so the hero report is and, and I don't know, I'm curious as to whether or not you use it it shows you what your utilization is you know like, uh, allocated versus written you know all this, essentially all the money you're saving is so, you know um, do you do you see those statistics do you use those statistics uh, do you report we, on that or? we don't really consider those I mean we we, I think we have a rough idea of what those numbers are, but we don't we don't track them to the penny the way some other organizations do. We would just <laughs> rather spend the time, you know, implement, you know, continuing to improve our design, implementing better solutions, and I mean, we can draw them up if we need to. But. Well, the reason I brought it up is because um, Compellent was really one of the few companies that said, "Oh yeah, we have that." We pushed a button and got it, hmm. and essentially they took metadata in from from you know, all their customers. It wasn't customer data, it was mm -hmm. metadata about you know, how the system was behaving and they just shared it with us. Mm -hmm. Here it is. And we were able to run a statistical sample on on the efficiency of the products relative to, you know, traditional arrays. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't get that type of reporting out of the other systems and it struck us that, wow, the reason is because it's so simple. 
mm-hmm. fundamentally. So well, there were some others too that, that mm. could do that, but it was sort of the modern architectures that component three par was another one that was really good at that uh, but some of the other stuff wasn't so it sort of underscores that whole trend I mean Callie and I were talking before this event our, the IT at our, our, our home is better than the IT at our work yeah. these days mm-hmm. and uh, I think th- that's you know you were asking earlier uh, of, of and by better do you mean easier yes I mean right. better experience that's right. what I mean and you know as an IT person you, got, you might ruffle some feathers saying that but the reality yeah. is, is you know, it's pretty easy to run IT at home. You get your Gmail, you get your phones, and it's mm-hmm. there's some complexity. But you were asking, Callie, you know, is that is that relatively new? Compellent is one of those companies mm-hmm. that I think catalyzed that whole that whole shift in the, the consumerization of IT. Do you yeah. see that you know driving into other parts of your business? Or? I think that if you really look at what it means to embrace the concept of private cloud, yeah, I, I think Compellent will be a facilitator for us as we as we really put the rest of the pieces in place with their storage and, and virtualization and then all the process shift that has to happen to really embrace private cloud. So, but, so private cloud, is that something you guys think about that's a term you use um, I, internally? We haven't, we don't use the term internally as such, but we, there are a lot of things we do that align with what people traditionally believe private cloud to be. What, what makes your private cloud, let's we call it that, what makes it cloud? Um, we are trying to, as much as possible, automate away the minutia of system provisioning and system re- and, and capacity addition. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, the, we really want the brain resources that we hire. We, you know, we hire people because they're smart and they're good at what they do. And we want them to be able to use those traits, sure. those assets, in in the most effective way, which is not click provision, click provision, click. You know, just <laughs> make make the make the busy work go away. Yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah. yeah, and let people think about really what can we do to help drive business initiatives. Like, what what systems can we put in play? Like, what high level integration can we do that's going to make all of this make more sense to our customers? It, as IT, our customers are both all of the tellers and the other frontline employees, and then obviously the customers of the bank. So you're yeah. about integration with your financial systems and the business systems that, right. that, that, that matter and drive yeah. value. Mm, exactly. How about, um, so there's a lot of customers out there that, you know, they might be using legacy systems, they might be using DAS. Um, what advice would you give to those individuals that are thinking about maybe moving to a more virtualized storage environment, virtualized CM environment? I think, you know, t- going, back in time and and if I could if I could give myself that same advice I would say understand what you want the system to do and how you perceive that it may grow I mean everyone talks about this massive growth of data and now it's you know, hundreds of percent every year and you just have to really understand what that's going to be and, and how you're going to use the system we we now understand that we have to monitor both raw capacity and then the overall performance characteristics of the data and the systems that yeah. we're, we're integrating and and that's where we failed early in, in 2007 and 2008 and got ourselves into a bit of a jam. Hmm. So have a vision, have a have a strategic direction, and it, it's a lot easier to put technology into a plan than to make a plan after you've already decided on, on random bits sure. of technology. Like, let the business drivers determine the technology you're going to use rather than forcing technology to drive business strategy because that leads nowhere good. Yeah. That's a good thought to end on. We really appreciate your time. Well, thank you so much. Um, all right. You have anything else before no, Dan, he leaves? I just wanted to, to make sure to I didn't cut uh, you off. Fantastic background. I, I yes, love the story. Yes, very interesting stuff. So uh, we'll have this up live. I mean, this is live now. We'll have it up uh, on demand on SiliconAngle.tv. Yep. So, fantastic. So oh, go in. Do you have a Twitter ID? I do. It's uh, at Dan Marbs. Okay. M-A-R-B-E-S. Yes. Correct? Yes. All right. Well, tweet me and uh, we'll try and... Uh, talk a little bit later. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much. (laughs) All right.